Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm going to introduce the rest of our panelists. And this is my desk you now. I'm very prepared to have note cards. This is a rarity for me, but there's a lot to get to today. So to my left, uh, we have uh, Dan Schatt. J Dan is the co-founder of Cred, a digital asset platform, uh, borrowing and lending platform with what we're going to talk about later, a $250 credit line, brand spanking, shiny new credit line. Um, in the middle, we have Granye McNamara. She's partnered head of PwC's blockchain division, right? Yep. And we're going to talk uh, about some of the news that came out about you yesterday, first thing. And JP Thoreau on the end is a co-founder of Uphold, a digital asset platform for management of fiat crypto. And I didn't know this, precious, precious metal assets as well. Uh, and so three different companies, three different people, a lot to get to. My name is Mike Arrington. I'm the co-founder of Arrington XRP Capital. We're a hedge fund, and I happen to be an investor in well, everybody except Pricewaterhouse in the middle. Um, so I'm conflicted. Uh, okay, let's start off with the fun. Let's start off with the fun stuff. Uh, actually, I'll summarize what we're going to talk about to make sure we're on the same page. So there, there's three things: the the new Pricewaterhouse uh, Cooper stablecoin. It was announced by the media yesterday, which there might be some errors in some of those announcements. Uh, the formation of the Universal Protocol Alliance, or the UP Alliance, which is going to bring stable coins and other products to market. Um, and actually, some facts about this stable coin. Because there is a stable coin, it just isn't the Price Waterhouse Cooper stable coin, as far as I know. Um, and maybe a little bit of extra news at the end. Um, Grania, so okay, so media reports yesterday compounded today that have fully announced that you are, you are announcing, releasing, and building uh, a new stable coin to compete with Tether and other stable coins. Uh, all of that's correct, is that right? Or is some of that incorrect? Yeah, that, that's pretty incorrect, Mike. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to clarify for the audience here. So we did not launch a stable coin. We are not backing a stable coin. We are not auditing a stable coin. Um, and I'm really happy and excited to be here to tell you what we are doing. Uh, in the space, uh, blockchain and crypto, and how we're partnering with CRAD um, and some of the things that we hope to accomplish out of that partnership. So uh, we did not launch a stable coin for those of you that read that in the media. How does that happen though? How does it go from we're not launching a stable coin to multiple media reports, including Fortune or Forbes, I forgot, one of the Fs, uh, that you're launching a stable coin? What happens there? Well, I think that, so, so here's one of the things, right, is that um, big for accounting firms like ourselves, obviously, with the work that we do, we are able to add legitimacy and credibility, right? So we, we um, audit uh, all of the household names that people will be familiar with in the room, um, or we provide advisory or tax services to them. So I think the media loves to watch what is it that we're actually doing in the space. Have we engaged fully? Are we there? What kind of services are we able to provide? And frankly, there is, I suppose, um, a sort of an existential risk to some of the audit services that we provide given um, blockchain, arguably, when it's fully um, extended, would, would be self-auditing. And so the question is, you know, what are the big four accounting firms doing? And of course, the media loves to latch on to things that, um, you know, would indicate that, you know, we're fully in. Um, and so I'll try to provide some clarity of, of course, we're fully in. We're fully supportive of this market. We are trying to, and we are working with partners, both on the traditional financial services side um, and, you know, new entrants into the space to, to try to do exactly that, right, which is to figure out how do we help uh, bring scalability, maturity, legitimacy, and so on. Um, but I think the media sort of misinterpreted that, that, you know, but the way that we would do that would be by launching a stable coin ourselves. And of course, that's absolutely not what we're trying to do. Okay, and not to dwell on this, but I noticed one thing you said. Blockchain is an existential threat to the big accounting firms. You're head of the blockchain group in PwC. Does that make you unpopular with your colleagues? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, we, all of our clients, um, and we just did a, we just published a global survey that said that 84% of our clients, and I'm not talking just financial services, I'm talking across everything PwC does, are consuming this technology in some form or fashion. So what does that mean? It means that they have um, digital transformation strategies that include in them um, building distributed networks and bringing digital assets to market and cooperating in different ways in their own ecosystems using uh, shared infrastructure and shared uh, data platforms and, and, and smart contracts for workflow orchestration and the likes. And so the, the question is, okay, if it works and consensus works and validation works of you know, data coming onto the chain and so on, what would the auditor do? Because we have a full history and a lineage and an immutable record in the ledger of everything that happened, what would, what would be the job of the auditor? And so we're looking at that in terms of, you know, again, 
what are the value add services that we provide across the spectrum um, of advisory and audit services and how can we partner with our clients who are entering into um, third party systems um, where again the way that they're showing up is different than you know how we audit them today so so think about again the third party risk management aspects of entering into these ecosystems, cyber risk aspects of entering into these systems. There's so many new risks that emerge um, that need, uh, again, firms like ourselves who have very large practices of people, you know, focused on cyber risk, focused on third party risk management, focused on uh, cloud technology, data, you know, shared data uh, environments and so on and so forth. So there's lots of opportunity for us to help and maybe the audit function itself changes the way we provide assurance, is, is, which is what we call it. At the end of the day, if you look at our mission statement, it is about trust. Um, and so again, people will argue, well, when the blockchain technology is fully extended, that trust is implicit, it's integral, it's, it's, it's automated. And of course, most of us sitting here in the room know that we're quite far away from that. So there's a transitional moment where people are looking for um, ways to substantiate um, that trust exists in these in these networks and how what do they rely on and so that's what we're trying to figure out what can you rely on okay you're good I can ask you anything <laughs> and you will you will have a perfect answer that you, may you, or may you not just a, met me I, I've turned into a really good consultant I actually grew up in the industry <laughs> I can, yeah I can tell you've been on stage before once or twice too all right but there is actually a stable coin like it's not a price waterhouse Cooper stable there is a stable coin that you guys are actually and it's pretty cool I say that, again, as an investor in both companies, but, or at least the alliance, and it, I don't know. I have, I have a lot of investments up here, but the stablecoin's cool. So tell me about the actual stablecoin so we can get that part straight. Yeah, so, so um, now that we know what, what PwC, what the, what the media knows now, what PwC isn't doing, there's a lot of great stuff that, that, um, that we are working on related to standards, related to things like risk management, custody, security, defining uh, technology standards that are necessary to really scale, uh, scale uh, the next 100 million people that are coming to the market. Uh, we are really excited to be, uh, to be announcing that we are going to be launching a stable coin that we think has some uh, notable features that are significantly better than uh, and you're, you're serious what's about out there. a stable coin that, that 100 million people instead of just a few. Uh, well, you know, this one's targeted at actually the two and a half billion people out there that aren't in crypto yet uh, that uh, could actually use something like this. So they're going to use your stable coin. Yeah, okay. that's right. That's All right. right. In addition to the exi existing 25 million people and, and the, the, that are out there using crypto today. And so you've got Argentinians, uh, you've got people from Turkey, you've got people from all over the world that are, you know, in unstable uh, fiat currencies today that are looking to get into something stable. But what's really missing, one of the things that's missing in the market right now is, is yield, right? The ability to actually get into a, a stable coin and actually earn interest on it. So we're going to be uh, launching a stable coin here that, that allows you to earn between 2 and 5%. Uh, interest. So not only can you get into something stable, right? If you're in a, if you're in Argentina, you can now get into something stable that is um, earning significant value. Not to mention the fact that um, this is substantiated and it's um, the the technology. Wait, is, is, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I have a question. All right, how are you paying interest on the stable coin? So I buy the stable coin. Maybe I sell Bitcoin. I have some stable coin. What's it called? The universal dollar. The universal dollar. The universal dollar, the up dollar. And then I just earn, how am I earning interest on it? How are you earning interest? Yeah. So the, the uh, cred is actually behind this. So cred uh, basically secured a, a $250 million uh, credit facility today, and uh, it's growing quickly. It's a decentralized lending platform. Cred is, is basically taking that, uh, is, is paying out the yield. Uh, it's turning around and lending at 9 10 11%. So uh, we're able to do that because we don't have the same infrastructure. So you're loaning this money out. We're loaning the money out, right. So I actually Absolutely. recently took a loan from you, and I think you charged me 10%. <laughs> your cost of capital is between 2 and 5%. It will be. It and will we're, be. We're so your next loan is going to be a lot lower. Yeah, it seems like it yeah. should be between 2 and 5% as a... Yep, absolutely. Right. It will be. All right. Go on. I interrupted you. So that's how... So by fleecing, us all in business here. by fleecing the larger hedge funds, you're going to be able to pay everybody a, a nominal interest rate. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's okay. Right. Go on. Yeah. So uh, the other thing that's really interesting about this is obviously we know, uh, you know there are issues today with Tether, right? There are, there are issues with a lot of other stable coins that relate to transparency, accountability. Here on chain, everything that's minted, uh, every, every token, dollar token that's minted, it's substantiated one to one on-chain, and you're able to see that in real time. There's a transparency function that, that really is what's instilling confidence uh, in this new stable coin. Okay. Uh, so security-wise, you know, we've got, some, we've got some benefits as well. Yeah. And that, again, that will be on the chain for anybody to look at. That's yeah. right. Okay. That's right. Any other interesting points about the stable coin you want to bring up now? Like, when will it be released, for example? Um, 
In November, and I think um, the best way to think about it is it's differentiated from the existing stable coins to yep. the extent that it's aimed squarely at the mass market. It's, uh, the, the ambition behind it is crypto delivers the goods to 2.5 billion holders of bank account who all want cheaper credit and higher yields. Um, so that's the, the hope behind it. Okay. So one thing I don't understand, though, is if it's for the 2.5 billion, how are they dealing with private keys? Because I don't understand how that works. Like yeah. my parents don't want to even know what private keys are. So. Sure. So, so the alliance, which is uh, putting this out and also putting out other universal tokens, which are really uh, ERC-20 wrappers around other uh, existing coins like Bitcoin, um, the, the architecture is such that it allows somebody whose predisposition is to keep these things in a cement bunker to go ahead and do so, but when they want to trade to, for an abbreviated period, uh, lend its credentials and balances for a trading session, then take it back. For grandma, who has no interest in uh, a situation wherein losing the equivalent of a password equates to losing value, uh, it's, it's dog simple. So how does that work? Because does that mean like we don't actually hold the private key and therefore we don't actually have control of the currency? I don't get that part. No, there, there's features in it that allow recoverability and inheritability in a sort of a multi-sig context. I don't know, Dan, if you want to speak to that. Yeah. So, so it can be detached. So you can't. You don't have the. You don't have to choose to be able to. You know, leverage uh, professional custodians. Um, it, you know, we, our, our feeling is the next 100 million people, they're going to want some, uh, some safeguards that, are, that exist today in, in mainstream financial services. So for them, this is incredibly useful, right? Um, they can basically, there's, it's part of a multi-sig approach. You've got two other professionals that, that if you lose your piece of private key, you can recover it if you go to the, the, the two uh, parties that do. So that's valuable. Things like inheritability are really valuable. So you know you 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 can designate a, a beneficiary, and you know if you don't check in uh, every once in a while based on rules that you set up, the the token can just move to your your next of kin as an example. But so, all yeah yeah. Well, I was gonna say I think there's probably a lot of details here, yeah. and for press and others that want to understand because this is important. Is there a website yet, or will there be where they can really dig into this part of it? Yeah, as of today, the white paper will be loaded to the Universal Protocol .io. Uh, Universalprotocol.io. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so the stablecoin we think is a is a really big deal because it's it's not just uh, it's not just another stablecoin out there. This is going to be something that is beneficial to everyone. But um, the other thing behind it that's probably even bigger is this is part of an alliance that we formed. So we basically, you know, we we looked at some of the biggest things that are holding back getting the next hundred million plus people uh, into crypto. And we found that, you know, basically our feeling is it's a couple things. It's interoperability, as we know, right? It's, it, you got a bunch of completing, competing uh, blockchain systems out there. Uh, and then it's those sort of lack of investor safeguards. So uh, creds come together with Uphold and uh, Brave Software and Blockchain at Berkeley. And this is the first of many things the Alliance is putting out. This is very concrete and substantive and, uh, and useful from day one. It's, it's ultimately an ERC-20 token. Uh, and we're going to be minting a variety of tokens that are going to be following on the heels of this, uh, a Bitcoin ERC-20 token. So now it can reason... You know, you've got, you've got the biggest pair out there, you know, uh, ETH and, and, and BTC, that they can't reason with each other. Now you've got... And XRP. Yep. XRP? XRP. You, you said XRP. XRP. Yeah. yeah, we'll have an XRP one, right? So now everything can be in the form of an ERC-20 token. Now the way our technology is set up, if some other, uh, some other blockchain ends up with a, a much more developed smart contract infrastructure, we could always move over to that. But we're betting right now that um, you know, Ethereum is, is the most developed as a smart contract infrastructure for this uh, capability. So your decentralized app now, it's not just ERC-20 tokens that can reason. You know, it's, it's now all of these other ERC-20 tokens in the form of BTC and the US dollar, et cetera. Will you be able to pay interest on the other tokens as well or just the stable coin, the idea? Eventually, uh, other than the stable coins as well in a sort of... You know. So you could theoretically then loan out these assets with permission of the ultimate owner sure. and people could earn a yield. Yeah, and it's a, yeah. Great, it's a great point because the flip side of all of this related to yield is, is the side of lending, right? And that's, that's what we're also very excited about. To date, you know, uh, when it comes to lending and lending fiat against crypto, it generally it's just been about fixed, fixed loans or it's been matching. Now what's happening is what we sort of asked ourselves is what is the most user-friendly loan out there 
other than a friends and family loan? And the answer that we, we, we realized was, well, it's probably like a home equity line of credit. Problem is not many people around the world own homes, but you can get single digit interest rates. You don't have prepayment pay penalties. Back anytime. You pay yeah. it back any time. Yeah. It's sort of just this really no, we've been easy line of credit. This because we don't, our hedge fund doesn't own a bunch of homes, it owns a bunch of crypto. And it's like, why can't we get big loans? We're just starting to, through you guys, Nexo and some other guys, to be able to get loans against this. But uh, you know, if we could actually get a, it's called a HELOC, HELOC type yeah, loan? Yeah, well now it's a CELOC. Yeah, and so crypto you're going- line of credit. And w I think people are desperate for that. So when, when will you offer that? This year. This year okay. it's coming out. Not, not long at all. And uh, we think it's going to be incredibly, uh, incredibly powerful for and what would the right? interest rate? Will I still have to pay 10% or will that be a more competitive? For, maybe a 1% or 2% discount for you. But uh, okay. no, it will be really reasonable. The, 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 the power of this now is that it'll be single-digit interest rates, right? And it'll be single-digit interest rates that are, uh, don't depend on where you live or who you bank with or what your credit rating is, right? It's the same because... Uh, Bitcoin is a Bitcoin around the world can be valued the same and so you'd be able to get the same, you know, okay. low interest rate. And what is Pricewaterhouse's role here? They obviously aren't like releasing it. So and, and it's self auditable to an extent. Yeah. So are they blessing the overall structure? Yes, yeah, so, so I think um, obviously what we're trying to do, we, we see ourselves as well sitting in between traditional providers of financial services, like I said earlier, and, and, and new entrants into the market who are bringing with them, um, you know, innovative technology that's, you know, arguably going to be more efficient and provide more access and, and, and reach more people. Um, and so the, the idea here is, okay, how does that work? How do we make secure, compliant platforms that traditional banks can interact with? Because if they're not, they can't. So credit can't come to the platform if it's not compliant and it's not secure and it's not scalable. Um, and so, and, and, you know, the, the investor or the borrower in this case, you know, th their, their needs also need to be protected, right? So the question is, how does that work? So we're partnering with CRAD so that we can, you know, again, bring the thought leadership that we already have on how it works today, um, and then figure together, you know, how, what's the appropriate way that all of these things do need to be architected from a technology point of view, from a, you know, safety and, and security point of view, um, that does allow it to scale out effectively, um, and that, again, people can rely on it because it's doing what it says on the tip. Yeah, and I just add, I mean, the work that, that uh, Grania's team has done has been invaluable in helping behind the scenes to develop all of those standards and, and helping us with, with looking at the technology and what's needed to scale. What's, what's great is, you know, in this world where everything is so decentralized, right, you've got offices all over the world, you're working in various jurisdictions with things that are very regulated traditionally, uh, having someone like PwC in that can uh, provide guidance and support around the world and leverage, you know, the, their global uh, network. Very powerful. I, I forgot to ask before on the stable coin, let me jump back to that really quickly and then we'll move on. Uh, the Winklevosses, I think it's a Gemini dollar, it's a bug and a feature that, that it's highly regulated in the U.S. government or other governments theoretically could force a, a reversal of transactions either with a warrant or there's some mechanism for that. I consider that a bug. Clearly the U.S. government thinks that's fantastic. Uh, I assume you guys also will have reversible transactions, or no? Well, it's uh, it's being debated at the moment. Um, the The problem is it, to make something upgradable in the future to, is to make it possible, and so to split those two things out from one another is uh, is a technical challenge that we're currently. Yeah, debating. but from a product perspective, the answer is no. <laughs> the the yes? desire would be no, non possible. Okay. But Great. if that means non upgradable, then it's an issue. Okay, all right. That was a no. A, a hopeful no. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else you want to say about the Up Alliance itself? So we're talking about the stablecoin, other products coming this year. The C Lock is an Up Alliance product as well, or is that a cred product only? It, it, it's actually both. Uh, are, are you guys merging as companies? No, we, not at all. The, the, there's an interplay okay. between the yield products, the credit products, and the token ecosystem that I think. You know, but some of the systemic advantages of this entire industry is that it's not bringing the baggage of expensive real estate and millions of employees and, and legacy technology. So that's an inherent advantage. But also the interplay between yield uh, borrowing and token economics allows a, a really interesting, hopefully, leaping of the rails into providing something to the to yeah. the uh, to the mass market. The last thing I'd say about the alliance is just simply uh, its its sort of mission statement, which is to address what we collectively feel are the three things uh, holding back the distributed ledger industry. Foremost, 
the lack of a common language. So as Dan alluded, it's there's the sort of primordial soup of competing protocols that despite most of the world acknowledging that this is the future, this is a coming internet of money, there's still a, an entry point conundrum. Is it is it Ethereum? Is it going to be Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Monero, Zcash? It's confusing. And so through uh, this this universal token system, we hope to bring a little forward the notion of a, of a common language where Bitcoin can benefit from the preponderance of smart con contract logic within Ethereum, can be a part of decentralized exchanges, dApps, and so forth. So that's the first ambition. The, the second one is to introduce conventional user safeguards uh, associated with more mature asset classes. So mom and pop are comfortable sticking their toe in the water in, 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 in so far as what today seems like a pretty rarefied uh, technophile sort of a thing. And then the last one is an emphasis on producing products that are germane to the mass market. That's it. Great. Awesome. Yeah, I, I just uh, I just add I think I think our, our whole you know aside from the notion of getting getting everyone else in it's it's just pushing 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 on transparency. It's a very inclusive alliance. So you know we're taking in exchanges and, and liquidity providers and others wallet providers. Anyone who wants to join the alliance can absolutely do so. But I think you know the, the, this notion of Any, you know I mean I'm part of the alliance. I thought it was a little bit more exclusive than anybody that wants to join. <laughs> I literally well, said I want to be part of the alliance. You're like, yeah, that's great, Mike. But literally anybody in here, I mean, I guess come talk great. to us. Come talk to us. <laughs> anybody um, else want to join the alliance? All... You get interest rates at only yeah. four times the interest rate they're paying out to everybody else. So. But yeah, so that, you know, I can't believe you screwed though. me on the interest rate. Like that. <laughs> I want to know what your FICO score is. That's what I want to know. Oh, it's T not ten percent rate. Do you know I sold when I sold TechCrunch and it was the first wealth I ever had in my life. Amex turned me down for a credit card. And uh, like it's just a basic credit card and because uh, my credit score is terrible. And um, I wrote a story on TechCrunch about that. And Amex was an advertiser and they put ads up all around the story saying how awful it was. And then their ad agency sent us an email saying, you have to take this story down. So I posted that email on TechCrunch as well. And then Amex got, but at that point Amex was pissed. But the good news is I got the credit card. So, but to answer your question, I have terrible FICO score. That, that's, why you're, that's why you're rated 10%. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> fair enough. All right, uh, thank you for that. And um, we have a couple seconds left. The last thing which we thought we'd get to if we had time was this massive credit facility you have that anybody can take a loan against like yep. us. So, you know, we're, we're, we're all about scaling and lowering, lowering, lowering our funding costs so that we can pass it on, you know, to everyone, to you, so that you can get your l lower interest rates. But we've secured a quarter billion. I mean, we think it's, it's probably the largest that, that we've seen in the industry so far. In dollars, It's yeah. in dollars, quarter billion loans. dollars. So you give you cryptocurrency to hold, yeah. and then you give dollars. Give us your BTC, give us your ETH, give us your XRP, we'll, we'll give you dollars. And uh, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to scale from here. I think the thing that is really promising is we're seeing a Lots of institutional interest come in now to basically say, look, we want exposure, we want to do this. So it tells us it's only getting bigger, right? Yeah, okay, great. And so how do you get a loan if you want a loan against come to our, come to the Come to the credit booth. We actually have our loan officer here uh, that's is actually... Is there a website as well? Or? Yeah, mycred.io. And, my cred, my cred and, 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 and uphold, and there'll be a waiting list uh, announced after this. Excellent, okay, great. Thanks so much, you guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, sir.